Hello everyone, today I'd like to take a bit of a mathsy trek into some introductory thermodynamics. Specifically, I want to formally go through how an equilibrium constant varies with temperature. You might be familiar with this in a qualitative way, I just want to add a bit of maths to it. Okay, so to get going, I've just set myself up with a generic equilibrium here between A and B and C and D. I'm going to define the parameters of this equilibrium. So the equilibrium constant will be equal to the concentration of the products, C and D divided by the concentration of the starting materials. Now an equilibrium constant is dependent on temperature. So I have to define the temperature for which my value is quoted for. I'm just gonna call that T1. Now another important parameter for this reaction is the enthalpy change. So the enthalpy change for the reaction, so that's delta R H. This delta R symbol reminds us that this is the enthalpy of the pure products take away the pure starting materials or the pure final state take away the pure initial state. So I'm just going to say, under standard conditions, I have a delta RH naught. Now, how do I know that the equilibrium constant is dependent on temperature? Well, we can have a look at one of the very key equations in thermodynamics. This is the delta RG for the reaction at standard conditions. That can be shown to be equal to minus RT log K. Again, the delta R representing the final takeaway, the initial state. I can rearrange this equation to give me log K is equal to minus delta RG naught divided by RT. And I could do e to the power of both sides of those just to get an equation for k, but we don't need to to see that there is a strong temperature dependence here. Not only is there a t down here, but also the Gibbs free energy change for the reaction is also a function of t. So there's not necessarily a straightforward relationship between temperature and the equilibrium constant. So to progress forwards with this, we need to look at the definition of the Gibbs free energy, and that's that the Gibbs energy is equal to the state function, the enthalpy, take away t times s, where s is the state function, the entropy. And also to go forward with this analysis, I need to use a result that's so important that it's often called a master equation, sometimes a third master equation, that tells me what happens when I make an infinitesimally small change to the Gibbs energy, so dg, using the language of calculus here. Now that is equal to vdp, the volume times by an infinitesimal change in the pressure, take away SDT, so that's the entropy times by an infinitesimal change in temperature. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of where this equation comes from, but it's so useful because the change in Gibbs free energy is related directly to the entropy change of the universe, and so the second law of thermodynamics. And specifically, it relates that change to things that are easy for us to measure, like pressure and temperature. Now, I've gone through a derivation of this equation in another video, and you can find that video at this link that's on the screen now, and I'll leave a link in the description below as well. So we know that equilibrium constants are related to changes in Gibbs energy, but we want to know how precisely it varies with temperature. So I'm just going to impose a condition now. I'm going to look at a circumstance where we've got constant pressure. That just means that the change in pressure is zero. So this equation reduces down to dg equals minus sdt. Now this is written in a so-called differential form. It tells us how a small change in g is related to a small change in t. But I'll just note that this is equivalent to sort of if a mathematician isn't looking, you can sort of imagine dividing through by dt here. This is equivalent to the derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature. Now I've used curly d's there because this is technically a partial derivative. This relationship is only true at constant pressure. So one of the parameters has been kept constant and this is equal to minus the entropy. Okay, so we can actually use those results to, to link us back to the equilibrium constant. Maybe it doesn't look massively promising right now, but bear with this. I want to consider a function and specifically, I want to consider the function g divided by t. So that's just the Gibbs energy divided by temperature. I'm going to see what happens when I differentiate that function. So it's two things divided by each other. We can equivalently write that derivative as dt of g t to the minus one. So using the product rule, this is dg by dt times by t to the minus one. And then I differentiate the t to the minus one and leave the g alone. So that'll be equal to minus t to the minus two times by g, just using normal differentiation. And now we can just do some substitutions because we know this dg by dt, that's the rate of change of Gibbs energy with temperature, is just equal to minus s. But also we know this function g is equal to h minus ts. So just doing a bit of tidying up there and expanding that t to the minus two across the brackets will give me this. And cunningly, the st to the minus one will cancel out. And so this gives me the slightly strange result that that derivative is just equal to minus h divided by t squared. 
And this expression is going to turn out to be super useful. In fact, it's so useful it's got its own name. This is the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. And just as a reminder, this holds at constant pressure. So how does this relate to an equilibrium constant? Well, I, some, I now need to get a handle on the delta Rg for a reaction using this expression. So by definition, delta Rg naught is equal to the Gibbs energy of the products, that's the pure products, take away the Gibbs energy of the reactants. Or if it's easier to think about, it's the G of the final state, take away the G of the initial state. So we can see from this, if I was just to differentiate the delta Rg with respect to temperature, because of the way derivatives work, I can just split this up into two terms. And then our gibbs helmholtz equation allows us just to substitute in a delta R. So combining these ideas, I know that the derivative with respect to temperature of delta Rg divided by temperature is equal to, well, by the same logic, minus delta Rh naught over T squared. And this is super useful because we know that delta Rg is directly connected to the equilibrium constant, which is right up the top here. Okay, so I can take my equation here and divide through by T, and I can plug this into this equation. So I can say that the derivative with respect to temperature of minus R log K is equal to minus the enthalpy change for the reaction divided by T squared. Now I'm just gonna cancel out my minus signs on each side. And this R is just a constant. So I can pull that outside the derivative, or in fact, I'm just going to pull it outside and divide through by it. That will leave me with an expression on the left-hand side for the derivative with respect to temperature of log K, so log of the equilibrium constant, is just equal to the enthalpy change for the reaction divided by RT squared. This is the Van Hoff equation, or sometimes the Van Hoff isocore. So I can deal with this in two different ways. I can just integrate it with respect to temperature so just doing the indefinite integral, that will give me log of k is equal to, well, for now, I'm just going to assume that delta Rh0 doesn't vary with temperature too much. So over a modest temperature range, so we don't want to go crazy on this one, this is essentially constant. If we wanted to do some more precise work, we'd need to bring in the temperature variation of delta Rh as well. So integrating the 1 over t squared with respect to t will give me a minus times by 1 over t, all times by the stuff that is constant. So that's our enthalpy change and our, our, our gas constant. Now for an indefinite integral, there'll be a constant of integration as well. I'm just gonna call that C. And now actually we've got a quite useful relationship here for experimental work. If we were to make a plot of log K versus one over T for say a variety of temperatures, we've got an equation in the form of a straight line of the form Y equals MX plus C. And specifically, this bit here is the gradient. So actually, that's an indirect way of getting delta Rh for a reaction if you happen to find an easy way of measuring equilibrium constants. And you might be able to do that using some sort of electrochemical experiment. We can also use this equation in a slightly different way. If I take the definite integral instead, and I'm going to change from temperature T1 to T2, so T2 just some other temperature, that'll give me the integral going from T1 to T2 of the derivative of log K with respect to temperature is equal to the integral from temperature one to temperature two of, well, I've just got those constants in, in there again. So the enthalpy change divided by R, one over T squared dt. Okay, so don't get too worried by this expression. On the left-hand side, we've got the integral of a derivative. That's quite easy because that's just the log of K going from T1 to T2. Remember, K will have a different value at different temperatures. On the right-hand side, just pulling the constant bits out, so assuming that the enthalpy change doesn't vary too much over a modest temperature range, so T2 isn't so different from T1. The integral from T1 to T2 of 1 over T squared dt, well, that's just equal to the constants times by minus 1 over T between temperature 1 and temperature 2. And just personal preference for my next discussion, I'm just going to pull the minus sign out and write this in the form 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1 and just to finish off, I'll just write out the left-hand side of this equation a little bit more explicitly. So what we're saying is that the log of k, and that's the value at t2, take away the log of k that's measured at t1, is equal to this expression. So this is actually quite a useful formula for us. Say we know the equilibrium constant at one temperature, we'll be able to take the log of it here and plug in a number. Because we know that value, we already know t1. So we pick a new temperature of interest 
and plug that number in for t2. And we can use this equation to solve for the new value of k. OK, so that was very much our first principles derivation of this equation to give us a quantitative relationship between equilibrium constants at different temperatures. But if you know some other thermodynamics, we can use some other relationships, which I'm not going to prove in this video, to get us to similar results. For example, we can show elsewhere that delta R G naught is equal to delta R H naught take T delta R S naught. But we also know that delta R G is equal to minus R T log K. And just dividing through by minus R T, this is actually the same thing that we got before from the indefinite integral. So if we were to plot log of k versus 1 over t for a variety of values, we should expect a straight line with gradients minus delta rh naught over r and y intercept delta rs naught. So actually we can use a plot like that to get us some values for delta rh and delta rs just from the equilibrium constant, which we might have got from electrochemical experiments, for example. A word of caution with that though, if you're plotting 1 over t, that does mean that this left-hand part of this graph will be very, very high temperatures, and lab temperatures are likely to be quite a long way away from the y-intercept point. So say you plotted some values and got some data that looked like this. You could draw a line of best fit from it and get a reasonably good estimate for delta Rh in that sort of temperature range, but you'd have to do so much extrapolation to get to your y-intercept that there's actually quite a lot of scope for error in your measurement of entropy change. So it's worth bearing that in mind if you're relying on that type of experiment. And just to tie this all together, I'm just going to use this equation one more time for a qualitative interpretation. Now remember, we're talking about an equilibrium here that looks something like this, and there's likely to be a non-zero enthalpy change for that, so some sort of delta R H naught. So we can use that equation qualitatively to say for exothermic reactions, that's where delta Rh is negative. We now know that the right-hand side of that equation must be negative because T squared is always positive, R is always positive. So the rate of change of the equilibrium constant with temperature, or the log of it more precisely, is negative. And we know that logs are strictly increasing functions. So that means if we increase the temperature, we decrease K. So what does that actually mean? Well, therefore, we've got more reactants than products than we had before. So what we normally say is the position of equilibrium moves to the left. And this is exactly what we'd expect from Le Chatelier's principle, which is a quick method for helping predict what happens to an equilibrium when you change some of the reaction conditions. Here, I'm just doing it a little bit more mathematically. So just quickly, we can see for endothermic reactions, the reverse is true. The derivative of log K with respect to temperature is positive. So that means for endothermic reactions, if we increase the temperature, we'll also increase K. And this time the position of equilibrium will just shift to the right instead. So there'll be more products at equilibrium in this case. Okay, that's me done for today. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I'm hoping this might inspire some people to go and look into these thermodynamics topics in a bit more depth.